Hi Virgos. I am feeling better. I still sound a little stuffy. My voice is still a little bit hoarse. Trust me, it's so much better than it was. A um, couple of things. I am using my son's um, computer for filming since mine is kaput and I haven't had a chance to get a new one and it is a little glitchy. It's not as bad as mine was so just bear with me if it like pauses it'll come back and all that stuff. Um, and uh, personal readings are I'm working on them slowly but surely. I'm still trying to um, conserve my energy as much as possible so thank you for your patience on your personal readings. Um, it's so funny, like right before, and I've been wanting to do our reading like right after pretty, you know, pretty soon because I know how Virgos are feeling right now. And, um, right before I, you know, when I was meditating and getting ready to start the camera, I got this like super anxious feeling in my chest and I get, it. I know, I understand where you are. I understand the anxiety. I understand that you feel a little bit alone right now. You're not alone. It just feels like it. Um, and I understand that um, there are just some things that you, you just don't get. Like you're trying to make sense of what's happening around you. And you know, we, we don't have any transits happening directly with us except for um, Neptune is across from us in Pisces. So this is going to make, like, this has been making things an illusion anyways, but it's really helping you um, define those, you know, this is all in relate your relationships. It's in your seventh house. And, but it's really defining where the illusion is from the reality, right? Because when Neptune goes retrograde, which it has been for a while, and then it went direct again in Pisces, it was like, you know, where do we go from here? What do we do with our relationships? And it's been such a question of things. We also have the Saturn and Pluto transit that's been happening. The Saturn's been in Capricorn all through 2018. It'll be there all through 2019. It's in our fifth house of, um, you know, creativity and, and um, where we see ourselves in the world and how we are connecting with other people and passionate projects and passion, you know, passion in relationships and um, Saturn is not an easy transit in the fifth house because if you aren't in a relationship or you're seeing where you need to be more serious in relationships um, or less serious, taking things less seriously in relationships, um, you can feel very alone during that time. And Virgos don't have a problem with being alone. I actually kind of had an epiphany moment where I was like starting to, I was like, oh man, um, I've kind of isolated myself through the sickness, which I did on purpose because I don't want to get anybody else sick. But then um, I realized that yes, Virgos can be alone to a certain point and then we really need to have that connection. And as, as the sun moves into Capricorn, as um, Mercury moves into Capricorn in January, um, we have Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn, and then we'll have um, the moon in Capricorn as well. When we have the solar eclipse, um, the first week in January, the illumination of where you have really grown within yourself during the alone times you spent in 2018. We've talked about how Virgos have grown so much in 2018. And it, it was, it wasn't easy. It's trial by fire. It's becoming a piece of coal going into a diamond. And it, it, you know, transits of the fifth house of Saturn and Pluto is not an, it's not easy. Pluto is going to be there until, um, 2000 or, uh, 2023. And so there's this transformative phase in your fifth house of passionate relationships and creativity that, you know, there could even be like this obsessive quality of needing to be with somebody and then needing to be alone. And it's almost like you're, you know, you, you get to one aspect of your life and you overdo it. And then you realize you've overdone it and you've either lost a lot of people or you have too many people around you and it's overwhelming. Right. And that's, it's been that teeter totter, you know, and 
all of this energy, you know, Uranus is going to be going direct. So every planet will be direct in January. And this happens, it happened in 2018. All the planets went direct in January of 2018. Um, so January 2019, all the planets are direct again. And on one end, that feels really good for a mutable sign because we feel like it's time to go, especially being in a fellow Earth sign where we can somewhat be grounded, but we can also be like pushing forward at the same time. But I want you to also remember that when there are so many changes happening to a very stubborn Earth sign, whether you're mutable or not, what is mutable Earth? It's an earthquake. It's when the it's when everything separates. So allowing yourself to be grounded during this time and allowing yourself to really see what it means to be who you are during this time is a big deal. Um, because December was tough. We had a whole lot. It, it was like there was a whole lot of attention there. But was it valuable attention? Was it was it something that we um, could use to our benefit or was it very fleeting? And then it just kind of left us feeling a little bit sore. There were realizations. There were rec recogniz rec you were recognizing the people that you could really trust in your life and, and the people that um, you really needed to let go of. And you've needed to let go of for a while, but with Saturn and Pluto, holding on to something and kind of being obsessed with something was really kind of out of your control if you didn't know how to use it. You know, and I, I you know, looking back on 2018, which a lot of people do when we hit the new year, um, you start to look back at the progress that you made in 2018. Through all of the ups and downs and everything that I went through, in 2018, I could see where I grew. I could see where I stumbled. I could see where, when I stumbled, how I grew. So I kind of, I want you to look at that instead of being, because, and the reason why I'm saying this is, is you will have a tendency in January um, through, you know, the second week will get a little bit easier after the eclipse, but then we'll have that full um, moon eclipse in zero degrees of Leo at the end of January, which again is in our 12th house, which we've had several times. We've had eclipses in our 12th house for, uh, you know, since 2000 and, woo, was it 2017? Yeah, 2017, maybe even 2016, there were some. Um, you have to recognize where you're holding on to things that you no longer need to be holding on to. And I know that's really hard. Because when a Virgo is forced by the stars to shift, when they're not ready to shift, there's that earthquake. And it feels very unsteady. And that's when the tower moments show up. Show up. And um, we've had several tower moments in 2018. So allowing yourself to come into the new year and recognizing um, where... The steadiness of a Virgo versus that mutable nature really needs to come into a clear balance. And it's not easy and it's not always fun, um, but right now it's kind of necessary. So if you feel like there are things that are falling out of your life and just kind of falling apart, there are reasons for it. Don't obsess over it. Thank, you know, and it's so much easier to say than it is to do, but thank it and move along. Say, thank you for teaching me that lesson. I appreciate it. Whoever it is that you need to leave in 2018. Um, and it doesn't mean that they're gone forever, but you really needed to learn a lesson from who that person was or what that job was or what that situation was, what that family situation was. Okay. Um, so let's look at the cards. And the reason why I want to say that is, is because I know right now there's this, this feeling of um, not really belonging, not really having like a place, you know, and it is because things are shifting so fast and, and rapidly and you're seeing um, how everybody is kind of like pushing forward and moving forward and, and positive things are happening in their lives. And you're looking at yours and you're like, but, 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 what? what what's going on here um don't get caught up in what other people's lives look like don't compare yourself 
to other people's lives because that will get you stuck. And this time of year, it's very easy to do that. So um, allow yourself to dream and to get into a place of, you know, what is it that you want? What is it? Where is it that you are headed? Right? So the first card that came out is the Hierophant. And then we have the Ten of Cups. And um, I know the, the preparatory time before, like Venus is going to be in Pisces in a couple of months. And when Venus is in Pisces, that's just opposite of us, our seventh house, that is relationships. That's a wonderful time to start new relationships. And you can really start, actually start new relationships now if you're not in one. Um, if you're in a happy marriage and you're, everything looks really good and everything's going really well, but there's still like this existential dread that's happening within you, find out what it is. What is it that you're missing? That's what Saturn is asking you to do. What is it? What is that passionate piece of you that you feel like you are missing? And, and go for it. Saturn wants you to clear out all of that karma from the past. You can go for where your soul is leading you to go. Um, and that can be very scary and it can be very chaotic and it can be very lonely when you feel like you're doing it on your own. Even if you have, you know, we talked about this in December, um, a Virgo can have a hundred people around them and feel completely alone or be in a room of four people and feel like they're at home. Um, the next card is the Knight of Swords. And this is the fear. You know, you want to have this, you could be dealing with a Taurus um, where the Ten of Cups was like in your grasp. And it was, um, and to me, the Knight of Swords is like, now there's just like chaos with it. You could be dealing um, with your spirituality and like, where is it that I belong within this Ten of Cups society? Where is it that I belong? Is it, is it actual society that's going to make me happy or is it going to be going my own way that's going to make me happy? Where, where am I getting my Ten of Cups from? And the Knight of Swords is saying, be careful how you think. And when you think, be careful what you say. To other people, to yourself, you could have an air sign also that's kind of charging in. And then we have the King of Cups. Um, the Ten of Wands and the Queen of Cups. It's no surprise to me that any kind of emotional effort that you're putting into something right now is a little burdensome for you because of the fear of how, um, you know, sometimes when you have something um, and you're feeling really good about it, if you're afraid that it's going to be like taken away from you, you know, that's like the downfall. Like what is one of the shadow sides of being a Virgo? Um, not only is it being stubborn, but it's also kind of that pessimism of, you know, am I ever really going to be happy? And that's and the reason why we do that to ourselves is because we're always looking for the next best thing. We're always trying to strive for something better in our life. Um, it doesn't have to be so hard. And I also feel like you're kind of setting yourself up for things um, for like the next 10 years of your life. You know, we're going to have Uranus moving into Taurus, which is a fellow Earth sign. And um, when Uranus moves into Taurus, it's like everything starts to change on a very um, 3D level, on a very material-based level. Things just start to shift and change. We kind of had a taste of that in 2018, and then it went into retrograde back into Aries. It will be going direct in Aries in January and then moving into Taurus in March. So... The emotional aspect of everything that's happening, it's been such a burden. You could be dealing with water signs or a water sign um, where there has been conflict. The thing to remember right now is 
not everybody's really on their A game. Everything is shifting for everyone because all of the planets, you know, and, and what is the most fixed sign in the deck is the Hierophant. And sometimes you just want to stay where you are and, and you want to get to your happy place by staying where you are. And that's just simply not how things, that, that's not how things work. And that's not how things are going to work. And the universe right now is trying to get you to move into a happier place. And if the emotions are a little too much for you, take a step back. Find out what it is that is triggering, right? The Knight of Swords can be very, very triggering. And when a Virgo gets triggered emotionally, it can turn into the Knight of Swords because they can be very sharp with their words and very hurtful. And so if you have been sharp with your words, you know, you want to get into this happy place, but now there's this burden because you've been sharp with your words or somebody else was sharp with their words. Um, you're sitting like I feel like Virgo is the Queen of Cups right now. Because the King of Cups shows that emotional maturity where they're standing there. The Queen of Cups can be a little bit over emotional sometimes, a little bit too clingy, a little bit too um, hard on themselves and hard on other people. Right? So let's see. Let's clarify these. Let's see what the Hierophant is. And it get, it's going to get easier. And I know that it doesn't feel like it right now. Right now it feels like everything is really, you know, and it's the end of December and it's the holiday season and you just want everything to look pretty and be pretty and life is just, you know, happy, right? Is that the reality of life or is that what everybody is showing on the outside so it looks like it's the reality? So Queen of Wands, so you could be dealing with a fire sign. If you're married to a fire sign and um, uh, Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries, Sun, Moon, or Rising, um, it feels very much like this Ten of Cups is like just out of reach for you. You know what I mean? It's like you look around and you're like, man, or if you're in a relationship with a fire sign or if you want to be in a relationship with a fire sign and it's like just almost there. And you, you, it's like you can see it when you close your eyes and then you open your eyes and you're like, oh, this is, this is my reality. And I don't mean to have like this really like down, like, oh, kind of reading. Um, I'm just, I'm trying to make it so it's not really super emotional and where you can understand how things are working for you and not really against you. Because right now it feels like everything is working against you. All of the energy is working against you. Oh my gosh, the Cancer full moon really illuminated so many things in my life. The things that I was doing wrong, the things that other people were doing wrong to me, the things that, you know, where do I, you know, when a Virgo has things illuminated in their life, it is like they beat themselves up. Whether it's their doing or it's somebody else's doing, they're going to find how they made it wrong, how they were wrong in that, right? And this is exactly what I mean. The Seven of Pentacles on the Ten of Cups. You're, I feel like you're waiting for an illusion. Yes, the Ten of Cups can be very, very real. But I feel like you want it to look a specific way. And the Seven of Pentacles is saying like, sure, you can manifest the Ten of Cups, but are you manifesting it in a way where you're saying, universe, bring the Ten of Cups to me in the way that is going to benefit me the most. And not, I want the Ten of Cups the way that I want it to look because I know that's what's going to benefit me. You, you don't. Because if it's with a certain person and that person has ghosted you or is, um, you know, hasn't talked to you in forever or, you know, whatever, or, you know, it's like this back and forth battle constantly, but you're like, no, no, no. I know we can be happy in this space, in this moment right now. What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for the 10 of cups that the universe wants to give you? Or are you waiting for the 10 of cups that you as a Virgo 
damn it, I know this is exactly what I want in my life. This is what I need. Because we think we know what we want and what we need. Like as humans, not just as Virgos, but as humans, we think we often go to that place where it's like, no, I for sure know that this is what I need and this is what I want in my life. And the universe is like, eh, but you thought that before and it didn't work out. So let's try something new. And a Virgo's like, no, I'm not budging. This is what I want. This is what I need. And that's what I'm saying. If you are waiting for an illusion or what you think could be perfect in your life, usually what isn't exactly perfect is reality, is the real thing. So on the Knight of Swords, we have <laughs> the Knight of Pentacles and the Chariot. Now, the, th the reason why I giggled with that is because it's so funny, because you feel like there's this really fast pace happening right now, and you're like, whoa, 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 I can't, because... When we get to the Knight of Swords, when a Virgo is at Knight of Swords, that's when the earthquake happens and the earth opens up and we can't handle it anymore, right? And we shake everyone else up in our world. I mean, let's, I'm, let, we can be real with each other, right? We can be real with each other. And so you get, and this is what we talked about, you get stubborn and you stay in one spot and you go very, very slowly. And the chariot is saying, so you could be dealing with a cancer since we have a lot of water energy here. And maybe you're being very stubborn about a cancer. Maybe a cancer is trying to charge in at you and you're like, whoa, you got to slow down a little bit. But um, the chariot also talks about destiny. It talks about movement forward in our soul purpose. It talks about... Um, where the universe wants us to be guided, you know, where, where, where the universe wants to guide us. And if the universe wants us to go quicker and we're trying to slow it down, that's going to cause an earthquake. Plate shifting. Right? The friction of it all. So this is where I want you to, when you're manifesting, when you're in the Seven of Pentacles and you've planted those seeds, for the Ten of Cups, if you have to anchor yourself in within the chariot, because the chariot's flying along, if you have to anchor yourself within the chariot to feel a little bit more grounded, that's okay. But make sure you're leaving space for the chariot to come in. Make sure you're leaving space for the universe to work in your life, because the more emotional you get, and the more you try to hold those emotions in, again, earthquake. So, and, and I feel like the holding of emotions has been such an issue. And that's where the, the burden is lying right now. Is um, not allowing yourself to really feel the effects of what December was. Um, because it was such a back and forth. Like there were... You know, like the beginning of December, it was fine. Everything was going really well. Sagittarius season came in and, and, and it was like, yes, motivation, motivation, motivation. And then things just started falling apart around you. And there was no explanation for it. And a Virgo needs explanation. And, and when you're not searching for that explanation within you, but you're looking in the outside world for all these reasons why things aren't going the way you want them to go, it's going to, um, you lose the point, you miss the point of why you need to learn those lessons to begin with, why you were triggered to begin with, why people came into your life for a hot second and then ran away or whatever, however things played out for you. Um, so if you're dealing with a water sign, uh, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. Things are really looking up with them. And I feel like I feel like your luck is almost tied to this person. Or there's like this destiny feeling. There's this um 
you just know. Like you can tell that there's um, something about the person where you kind of just need to have them in your life. And this could be sun, moon, rising. Um, this is also, I, I feel like just, I really feel like there is um, some kind of karmic activity that benefits you when it comes to um, the water signs in your life. So um, if you need to have that emotional support, I almost feel like they'll like kick you, like kickstart you and, you know, and this could be a friend, this could be a coworker, it could be a family member, it could be your lover, it could, you know, I, I don't care who the water sign is in your life, um, could be a cancer, see, and even my coffee pot is approving. I think that happened in the last Virgo video, which is really weird. Um, something about this water sign in your life, or all of the water signs in your life for that matter, um, they're boosting you. They're pushing you forward. Um, and I want to say that they're kind of taking some of the burdens on for you. So let them. And it's like they're not even doing it. They're just, they're kind of doing it where they'll text you or call you one day and be like, hey, I haven't heard, we haven't talked in a while. We haven't hung out in a while. You want to do this? You want to do that? You know, let, let's go hang out, right? I feel like they're helping you eight of cups on the ten of wands walk away from all of those really those the over the overburdening emotions that you've been feeling for months since your season since before your season it was like this rev up to your season totally sucked with all the eclipses right in 2018 let's leave all that behind and then your season hits and you're like all right we're good to go and then all of a sudden scorpio season hits and you're like oh holy crap i'm here again in these emotions, in these feelings. And Virgos are very loving, sweet. And I know cross watchers are gonna be like, not all Virgos, no, you're right. Not all Virgos are wonderful people. Not all Virgos are sweet or gentle or kind or nurturing, true. But an evolved Virgo um, is very kind, but they have a very hard time showing emotions. They will not outwardly pour out their emotions because Virgos stand tall. And they're like, nope, I'm the one that has to stay put together so I can help everybody else. The thing is, is we've been going through so much lately that the more we try to stand tall and show everybody this like poised, virginal, nope, I'm good. The more we do it, the more the universe is saying, Stop it. Stop doing that and let other people help you. Be vulnerable. Be vulnerable like the Queen of Cups can be. And that's the place. And this is, this is the reason why I'm saying this is because if this fire sign, if you've been waiting for somebody to show up in your life, to have this happy life, right? Because you've pictured it in this certain way where this is how it's going to be. And that's what you've been waiting for and waiting for and waiting for. And the chariot's like, but I have other places to take you. I have other things for you to do. And then there's a water sign that shows up in your life that could change your fortune in a good way. I don't want you to miss it because you keep on looking back into that 10 of cups of, but I'm waiting for this. This 10 of cups isn't real yet. And it may not even be exactly the way you want it to look or the way you think it's supposed to look. So let the water sign or let the water energy flush all that out. Be vulnerable. Be open. Really, in January, look within and allow yourself to finally walk away from the things all the things on my Instagram last night and I've been on Instagram a lot while I've been sick. If you are not following me on Instagram, you're missing out. So fearless intuition 1111 on Instagram. Um, but, um, last night I put up a meme that, oh my gosh, I totally lost it. You guys love me. Just give me one second here. Oh, okay. 
So it says when you finally decide to, to cut the last toxic person out of your life before the end of 2018. And it's these two birds on a perch and one of the birds has, <laughs> has his foot raised. Anyway, I digress. Um, that was my awkward Virgo moment for the reading, by the way. Because um, it's funnier if you look at it than if I just tell you about it. So go to my Instagram and look at it. It's pretty funny. Anyway... Let the water energy right now, because there's a lot of it, the Cancer North Node, um, you know, we've got uh, Venus in Scorpio. I think that's actually moving into Sagittarius in January. I don't even need to look. Um, but the the water and, and Neptune in Pisces um, and um, Mars is in Pisces right now, but it will be moving into Aries in January, the first week in January. So, but let the water energy guide you away from the burdens. And if you have to get vulnerable with yourself and get vulnerable with other people, allow that to happen. Let it happen. Literally let the water and the waves, you know, even in your meditations, if you can visualize the waves coming in and washing your emotions out and coming in like with each breath that you take, um, that's really going to help you release a lot of the emotional turmoil and baggage like let's get real we can be a little dramatic with it because it's been months that we've had this burden on us of emotion after emotion after emotion and virgos don't do emotions well we like to be very stoic we like to be very strong and when we admit when we're wrong when we admit when we're vulnerable very few and far between but when we do it, man, is there a weight lifted off of our shoulders. And the more you walk away from these emotions, the more you allow the emotions to carry you to a better place, the harder you can work. And that's where you want to be. Because when an emotional, when a Virgo is emotional, they can't do the work. They can't get the work done. And that's not okay for a Virgo. That's a very bad place to be in. So let the, let the luck of the Wheel of Fortune and the water energy get you through this. Um, and while you're doing that, all of the transits that are happening in Capricorn, all of the, um, the things, you're, you're getting to do all of the things, right? Um, you can plan for all of the things now. And that's really, you know, you have a lot of opportunities. Seven of Cups at the bottom of the deck. And we have the Magician here on the Queen of Cups. And this is what I'm saying. I really feel like Virgo is in a very Queen of Cups state of mind right now. Which means your intuition also may be really heightened. Which is great. Take advantage of that. Really listen to yourself. Listen to your body. Listen to your emotions. Listen to your mind. And you can quiet it also. But being the Magician right now is going to help you when it comes to all of the things. And I highly, 112%, maybe even 20%, 120% suggest that um, maybe, maybe you don't take a lot of offers. Four of Cups. Even if people are offering you things, I kind of feel like they might not be real. You need to be very discerning. You need to make sure that you're looking at everything in the right point of view with the hanged man. And we have the ace of swords, see what I mean? Two of cups, see what I mean? Five of swords, 10 of swords, three of swords. All right, and this is exactly what I mean. If there are people in your life, and it could be that this water sign comes in and offers you something and it looks real to begin with, but the universe is giving you this nudge, like, here's your chance to recognize what the good things are versus what's bad for you. Because the Wheel of Fortune can work that way as well. It can illuminate a lot of things. Um, I, I want to say in January, if you are being offered stuff, like any kind of relationship status. Now, I don't, and, and if you're already in a relationship, <coughs> 
things are looking up and things are getting better. But not everybody is being 100% honest. Sorry. Told you, I'm still trying to get well. Um, not everybody is being 100% honest with everybody else. So I want you to make sure with the, um, the uh, hanged man and the ace of swords that you're being super, super honest and you're cutting the, the illusionary offers out. Like the things that are no longer serving you because like, I, I mean like literally like the fuck boys. We, because you've almost been overwhelmed with attention from people or attention from like just all the negative aspects. And it's because when your vibration isn't as high as it should be, or when you're not really feeling very good about yourself, or when you feel like you need to have another meme I put on Instagram. It's so funny that these memes are like popping up in my head. Getting attention from the wrong person at the right time, from the right person at the wrong time can make you yeah, can make you think that they're the one. The right attention from the wrong person. Right? Like somebody's giving you attention. They're it's like they're it's it's the very wrong time, it's the very wrong person, but because it's the right attention at that time, moment in time in your life, it can make you feel like they're the one or they're going to sweep you off your the only person that can save you is you. And you have to remember that right now. Because you want to have this two of cups, five of swords, 10 of swords, three of swords, but the remnants of the things that have ended, we have three tens here in this January reading. So you know, and the wheel of fortune, which is also a 10. So you know that all of the emotions and all of the things and all of the deceptions that you feel like you were deceived or you deceived yourself in some way or somebody else hurt you or you hurt somebody else, it all is coming to a culmination. And if it hasn't come to a culmination now, it's going to happen in January. This is a good thing. Because when all of this comes to a culmination, now you can look into your future with the two of wands and you can let go. Don't hold on to the three of swords, the 10 of swords, the five. Don't hold on because we can often get in our thought. These are all about thoughts, right? We can, we can reminisce. We can, we can go back into everything that was good and everything that was bad. And then it hurts all over again. That's what you need to, that's what the burden is. That's what the emotional burden is that you're walking away from. All of the illusions, the things that you thought. So now's really not the right time to accept new offers. And if a new offer comes in, and it's funny because not even the transits are telling you not to do it. It's just the energy of a Virgo right now is you're not ready. And I want you to be honest with yourself about it. If you're not already in a relationship. And new people start to show up in your life in January. Either be extremely discerning about it or be like, oh, now's just not the right time. Be very honest with yourself because there's a lot of water here and there are a lot of swords here, but there's not a lot of pentacles. We have the seven of pentacles, the waiting. And that's what I mean because the more a Virgo gets in their feels, the less productive they are because we don't exactly know how to do our feels. So as you leave behind all of the, like I actually want to start crying right now. I'm sorry. You leave behind all of the stuff in 2018. Look what you have, the whole world in front of you. And what's in the whole world? The lovers. But if you're looking forward, could be a Gemini, maybe you're traveling to a Gemini, nine of swords and the seven of wands and the five of cups. If you, and this is what the full moon at the end of January is going to show you, right? With you have the moon card as well on the bottom of the deck. The nine of swords, the seven of wands and the five of cups after 
you're recognizing and see this is like the up and down this earthquake that the virgos can go through in january and so this is why i want you to really get centered with your heart and your mind um if you get to a point to where you're like yes i'm leaving all of that behind yes i'm leaving and then you start looking to your future and you're like okay this is what i'm going to start manifesting and i'm going to give it to the universe the one thing that you can do to stop yourself from manifesting it is getting is becoming defensive and putting up walls and getting in your mind and reminiscing about the past and the full moon in leo at the end of january is going to bring this to your attention because it's an eclipse because it's going to it's, all the feels are going to come up right and I got to say, Virgo, this energy won't last very long. And maybe you need to have all these feels pop up one more time. It's like you almost get this two-week break, and then the full moon happens, the full lunar eclipse, and zero degrees of Leo. And all of this reminiscent energy comes up, and you start putting up your boundaries and, and your walls again, and you really get back into your feels, and you're like, oh, my God, I thought I was over all of this this is to help those final drops wash away and i want to say don't fight it because you get to a good place and you start to feel a little bit more you know maybe a gemini is helping you with your future as well there could be like business plans or something like that but this is also about making choices the lover's card is about making choices in relationships and it's about allowing yourself to become centered as your divine masculine and your divine feminine within you after the full moon energy the sun comes out right six of wands the sun oh look at that oh i'm so glad i pulled these and then um and it was the leo remember i said it's the leo full moon um, and that, that sun card is Leo. And then we have the queen of pentacles. So sitting back on your throne, celebrations, three of cups, ten of pentacles, judgment, justice, and the star. And this is why I'm saying just be, be kind to yourself because it's coming. And I know that right now it's hard. And I know that January is not going to be the easiest. It is going to let up. But just know that what's happening in the skies right now is allowing you to become the best version of yourself. And it's not about being with somebody else. And it's not about having the passion for somebody else's life. And it's not about allowing yourself to get obsessed with being with in a relationship or whatever it's about being the best version and you know this is karma judgment and justice are all about karma you could be dealing with a leo i'm sorry a libra or an aquarius as well um but all of this karma stuff that that had to come up for you it had to and we all have it it doesn't mean you're a bad person if you're having to clear out your karma. Um, it's just being illuminated to you in a way, and Virgos take it very personally because they're like, when they are um, forced to realize they're not the smartest person in the world or even in the room, it, it's a blow to the ego. Yes, Virgos have egos. That's the shadow side, right? getting that blow, getting that knocked down. So once all this karma comes up and all of it is just washed away and you really recognize how much you've grown, going all the way back to the beginning of the reading, this is all about growth. It's all about recognizing, you know, it's not what you didn't accomplish in 2018. It's what you did accomplish. Where were you at the beginning of 2018 versus where are you now? And if it doesn't look exactly the way you thought it was going to look, the universe had other plans for you. 
So count your blessings and know that all of your wishes are really coming true. Like, you know, it's not a time to be like, woe is me, right? You are getting to that 10 of pentacles. We have all the tens out here. Okay. And the double 10. I love you guys. Um, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. I will be getting the 2019 forecast done after I finish all the January readings. Plus, I have a lot of personal readings to get caught up on. So, um, thank you for all of your love and support in 2018. Um, it was I, just, I love my job and I love what I do every single day. Sometimes we need to like take breaks and remember why we do things. Um, the way that we're doing and how we can better ourselves. And I think that the, like me getting sick at the end of 2018 for basically two months, I was pretty, you know, up and down, um, was all about me, um, reassessing and it was, it was really, really rough and it was really beautiful all at the same time. So, um, again, thank you for all your love and support with this channel and, um, all of the readings from now until December 31st um, on my website are up to 25% off the email. The $15 email readings are back. So take advantage of that while you can. Um, and they're only limited. I only have a limited number of those that I put out. Um, and everything else for during the holidays is um, 20 to 25% off. So I love you guys. I will see you in February. Be really, really good to yourselves in January. It's coming. It's coming. Promise. Bye.